Hello viewers. Today I will be discussing about the most important topic of physiology named cardiac cycle. Before I proceed, I would like to thank my guide Professor Jogen Chandra Kalita sir for giving this opportunity to prepare a presentation for the undergraduate and the postgraduate students. Let us now proceed towards learning the anatomy of the heart with special reference to cardiac cycle. The learning outcomes of this presentation that is the objectives of this presentation will include to recall the history of cardiac cycle to understand the anatomical structure of the heart which includes the chambers of the heart the valves that are present in the heart to understand the conduction of impulse through the heart to understand the phases of cardiac cycle along with the pressure and volume changes to understand the ECG of the heart now moving on to the history of the cardiac cycle it was first conceived by a famous scientist named Carl John Wiggers in the year 1915 then in 1920 it was first assembled by Sir Thomas Lewis a Wiggers diagram which is a standard diagram used in cardiac physiology which depicts the various phases of the cardiac cycle along with the pressure and volume changes and also the ECG changes in the various phases of the cardiac cycle is used. It is named after Dr. Carl Johns Wigger who actually conceived the cardiac cycle. This is the picture of the two famous scientists who were involved in determining the cardiac cycle. Now let's meet the most fascinating organ in our body which is keeping us alive that is the heart. The heart is sitting in a protective thorax area between our lungs and it is generally about 4.8 inches tall and 3.35 inches wide. In men the heart weighs about 0.68 pounds and in case of women it weighs about 0.56 pounds. The human heart that is the four chambered pumping organ of our body is protected by four layers so that it remains safe from any external injury. The very first layer in which the heart resides is the pericardium. It is a loose membranous sac. The second layer that is the epicardium which continues with the pericardium. The third layer is myocardium whose name itself says that myo means muscles. That is it is composed of bands of involuntary striated muscle fibers. The fourth layer which is the endocardium whose name suggests that endo meaning inside and it is a thin layer of tissue in the inside of the heart. The heart generally consists of two atria or atrium and two ventricles which is divided by a septum that means it separates the oxygenated blood from the deoxygenated blood as we already know that double circulation occurs in our human heart. This is a very beautiful picture of the heart in which we can see the various parts which we have already discussed. Now moving on to the valves which are present in the heart. Now what do you mean by a valve? A valve is a membranous fold in a hollow organ or tubular structure which maintains the flow of the contents in one direction by closing in response to any pressure from the reverse flow. That means the valves in the heart are unidirectional. It only supports unidirectional flow of blood. First 
we can see we have the tricuspid valve which separates the right atrium from the right ventricle. The second one is the pulmonic semilunar valve which separates the right ventricle from the pulmonary artery. The third one is the bicuspid or mitral valve. It separates the left atrium from the left ventricle. The fourth one is the aortic semilunar valve which separates the left ventricle from the aorta. In this beautiful diagram we can see the locations of the four valves of the heart. Now further proceeding to the electrical signal flow or the conduction pathway of the electrical impulse which originates in one place of the heart and travels through the whole heart. The first point is that the cardiac impulse originates at the sinoatrial node or the SA node. This SA node is known as the pacemaker of the heart. The action potential which is generated spreads throughout the right and the left atria. The impulse from the right atria or the atria passes into the ventricles through the atrioventricular node. It is the only point of electrical contact between the chambers. After that the action potential is briefly delayed at the atrioventricular node which ensures that atrial contraction proceeds ventricular contraction to allow complete ventricular filling. Then the impulse travels rapidly down the intraventricular septum by means of the bundle of his. Further the impulse rapidly disperses throughout the myocardium by means of Purkinje fibers. The rest of the ventricular cells are activated by cell to cell spread of the impulse through the gap junctions. That means the ventricular cells are activated when cell to cell connection is generated and the impulse flows through the whole of the heart. Here we can see two beautiful diagrams which shows the conduction of electrical impulse and also its origination and its transfer from one part to another. In the second diagram we can see that the first point as it is marked means it is the generation of the heart impulse which flows through the atrioventricular node then through the atrioventricular bundle which is the bundle of his following through the left and right bundle branches and then to the Purkinje fibers and after that to the whole of the heart. This is how the electrical impulse is originated in the heart and it flows through the whole of the heart which causes the heart to beat and pump blood. Now if we proceed we can see a beautiful diagram where the impulse conduction through the heart is beautifully explained. As I have already said that the SA node is the pacemaker of the heart where the impulse is originated. Here the time is written zero as because the impulse is just generated. In the step two we can see some areas have become blue that means the stimulus has spread across the atrial surfaces and reached the AV node. Here time taken is 50 milliseconds. In the step 3 we can see most of the part of the heart that is the atrium part has become blue which means that the stimulus have covered the atrium area. There is a 100 millisecond delay at the AV node that is the atrioventricular node where the atrial contraction begins. 
that is why the time which is taken is 150 milliseconds then in the step 4 we can see a small part in the middle of the two ventricles is bluish in color that means the impulse has traveled along the intraventricular septum within the atrioventricular bundle and the bundle branches to the Purkinje fibers and via the moderator band to the papillary muscles of the right ventricle. As we can see an arrow has been pointed. Here the time taken is 175 millisecond. Then the step 5 which explains that both the ventricles is bluish in color which means the impulse is distributed by the Purkinje fibers and it is relayed throughout the ventricular myocardium. Here the atrial contraction is already completed and the ventricular contraction begins. Here the time taken is 225 milliseconds. This is the whole figure about how the impulse has been conducted throughout the heart and how it is distributed through the heart which causes the heart to pump the blood in and out. After discussing about the generation of electrical impulse in the SA node and the conduction of the impulse through the whole heart muscles, we will now move on to our most important part of this presentation that is the cardiac cycle. Now what is a cardiac cycle? It is the succession of events that take place in the heart during each beat and so includes the diastole, the systole and the intervening pause. That means when the heart beats each beat includes certain events and the complete of events that takes place is known as the cardiac cycle. It includes the diastole, the systole and the intervening pause that means the contraction, relaxation and the pauses between them. Now if we talk about what is the duration of the cardiac cycle meaning about how much time the cardiac cycle takes that is for an average heart rate that is of 72 beats per minute the duration of the cardiac cycle is about 0 0.8 seconds this is a beautiful flow chart which shows the events which are distributed into certain phases which constitute the cardiac cycle generally the cardiac cycle consists of only two major phases which is the relaxation part and the contraction part. So if we divide it, we will find that cardiac cycle majorly consists of two phases which is the atrial cycle and the ventricular cycle. Means the cycle which goes on in the atrium and the ventricular cycle which is the cycle which goes on in the ventricles. Atrial cycle includes two phases the atrial systole and the atrial di diastole that is the atrial contraction and the atrial relaxation. Moving on to the ventricular cycle it includes two phases which is the ventricular systole and the ventricular diastole that is the ventricular contraction and the ventricular relaxation. The ventricular systole again is of two phases isovolumetric contraction and the ejection phase. The ejection phase is again divided into two phases which is rapid ejection phase and slow ejection phase. The ventricular diastole now is divided into three phases. Protodiastole phase, isovolumetric relaxation phase and the ventricular filling phase. This ventricular filling phase is further divided into again two phases the rapid passive filling phase and the slow passive filling phase 
we will talk about all these phases in the next part of the presentation now moving on to the subdivision of the cardiac cycle duration that means each phase of the cardiac cycle or each division of the cardiac cycle contributes to how much time in the whole cardiac cycle duration it is divided into two parts first the systole where we can see that isovolumetric contraction contributes about 0.05 seconds whereas the ejection period is 0.22 seconds that means it totals to about 0.27 seconds next when we come to the diastole phase the diastole phase consist of again five subdivisions the proto diastole which is about 0.04 seconds the isovolumetric relaxation which contributes to 0.08 seconds the rapid filling phase which contributes to 0.11 seconds and the slow filling phase which contributes to 0.19 seconds and the atrial systole which contributes to 0.11 seconds all this totals to about 0.53 seconds from this calculations we can observe that the total duration of the cardiac cycle is 0.27 plus 0.53 that equals 0.8 seconds so here we can see the various subdivisions of the cardiac cycle duration which totals to 0.8 second now let us see our atrial cycle in details the atrial cycle consists of the first phase that is the atrial systole means atrial contraction the atrial contraction phase generally lasts for about 0.11 seconds and it coincides with the last rapid filling phase of the ventricular diastole so before the beginning of the atrial systole ventricles are relaxed atrioventricular valves that is the av valves are generally open and the blood is flowing from the great veins into the atria and from the atria into the ventricles thus the atria and the ventricles are forming a continuous cavity so when the atrial contraction begins about 75% of the blood has already flown into the ventricles thus atrial contraction usually causes the additional 25% filling of the ventricles as we can see in this flow chart when the contraction of the atria occurs the av valves open and the blood flows from the great veins into the atria this causes only 25% filling of the ventricles this point is to be noted that 75% of the blood has already flow into the ventricles this contraction of atria generally causes the increase in the inter atrial pressure by 4 to 6 mm of mercury in the right atrium and 7 to 8 mm mercury in the left atrium this pressure rise causes a a wave to form in the ecg about which we will discuss in the later part there is also an increase in the ventricular pressure because of the pumping of blood in the ventricles and also there is also a narrowing of origin of great veins that is the inferior vena cava and superior vena cava which opens into the right atrium and the pulmonary veins which opens into the left atrium as a result of which there is decrease in the venous return to the heart now the next phase 
that is the atrial diastole after the atrial systole there is the occurrence of the atrial diastole which lasts for about 0.7 seconds and this period coincides with the ventricular contraction or the ventricular systole during the atrial diastole what happens is that there is relaxation of the atrial muscles as most of the blood has already flown into the ventricles so now gradual filling of the atria occurs due to continuous venous return and here the pressure drops down almost to zero after that the pressure again rises and follows the ventricular pressure during the rest of the atrial diastole when the pressure drops to almost zero it is due to the opening of the atrioventricular valves as we have completed the atrial cycle now we are moving on to the ventricular cycle the first phase of the ventricular cycle is the isovolumetric contraction the name itself says it is isovolumetric contraction means iso means same volumetric means the volume which is talking about and contraction means the systole movement here what happens there is an increase in the ventricular pressure which leads to the closure of the atrioventricular valves this closing of the atrioventricular valves leads to the production of the first heard sound further there is no change in the volume of the blood therefore it is also called isovolumetric contraction there is a sharp rise in the atrial pressure which is caused due to the bulge in the av valves and this bulge causes the c wave to occur and this c wave can be seen in the electrocardiograph here the pressure in the aorta is about 80 mm hg and the pressure in the pulmonary artery is 120 mm hg as a result of this pressure the pulmonary valves open here we can see the beautiful diagram of the isovolumetric contraction where the pressure rises in both the right and left ventricles and there is continuous return of blood into the right atrium point to be noted that since the av valves have closed and the seminular valves have not opened yet the ventricles contract as a closed chamber and the pressure inside the ventricles rises rapidly to a high level this phase generally last for about 0.05 seconds now moving on to the next phase of the ventricular systole which is the ventricular ejection phase this ventricular ejection phase is divided into two parts rapid ejection phase and slow ejection phase during the rapid ejection phase the name itself says that there is rapid ejection of blood here the semilunar valves of the heart is open and the blood ejects out for about 0.1 second this part that is the rapid ejection phase is the one third of the systole it constitutes about one third of the systole in this phase the ventricular pressure in the right side is more than 120 mm hg and the pressure in the left ventricular part is about more than 25 mm hg almost 70% of the blood is ejected here here we have said a new word which is known as stroke volume that means about 80 ml of blood is ejected out by each ventricle during the systole and this volume is known as stroke volume now if we see the slow ejection phase here also the name itself says 
that there is low delivery of blood that means the rate of ejection here declines and continues for about 0.15 seconds it is the two-third of the system that means it constitute about two-third of the system and only 30 percent of the stroke volume is ejected here that means from 80 ml of blood only 30 percent is ejected here in this phase as the name, name suggests the intraventricular pressure declines we can see the figure the blood is flowing from the left ventricle and also through the right ventricle to the pulmonary artery Now let us move on to the ventricular diastole. The ventricular diastole consists of the first phase which is the protodiastole. In the protodiastole what happens that when the ventricular systole ends the ventricles start relaxing and here the ventricular pressure falls rapidly. During this phase the elevated pressure in the aorta and the pulmonary artery immediately pushes the blood backward towards the ventricles which snaps the semilunar valves to close. This closure of the semilunar valves prevents the black flow of blood to the ventricles. This closure also causes the production of the second heart sound. The ventricular pressure drops more rapidly but the pressure in the great vessels is sustained by the elastic recoil of the vessel wall which exceeds that in the ventricles. And this phase lasts for about 0.04 seconds. Now moving on to the second phase of the ventricular diastole that is the isovolumetric relaxation phase. Here we can see the beautiful diagram where there is the flow of blood into the ventricles. Here what happens the phase starts with the closure of the semilunar valves and since the semilunar valves have closed and also the atrioventricular valves have not yet opened so the ventricles continue to relax as a closed chamber in this phase. This causes the rapid fall of pressure inside the ventricles. The aortic and the pulmonary artery pressures rises slightly here. This valve closure is associated with a small black flow of blood into the ventricles. In this phase the ventricular volume remains constant so the name is given as isovolumic or isometric or isovolumetric relaxation phase. This phase ends when the atrioventricular valves open and it is indicated by a peak of V wave to be noted V wave on the ventricular pressure tracing. Also left atrial pressure rises because of the venous return from the lungs. Now the next phase is the rapid passive filling phase. As the name suggests that means there is a filling of blood in the ventricles. This beautiful diagram depicts that there is a rapid flow of blood into the ventricles from the atria. How this happens? We can see that once the atrioventricular valves have opened already during the isovolumetric relaxation phase the blood that has accumulated in the atria now flows rapidly into the ventricles. Here 
the rapid passive filling phase produces a third hard sound which is generally not audible in adults but is definitely audible in case of children the atria and the ventricles are now in a common chamber and the pressure generally falls in both the cavities as the ventricular relaxation continues this whole rapid passive filling phase contributes to 0.11 seconds of the cardiac cycle now moving on to the next phase which is the reduced filling phase the reduced filling phase tells us that the rest of the blood that has accumulated in the atria now flows slowly into the ventricles which is in continuation with the rapid passive filling phase here the pressure in the atria and the ventricles remains little above zero because it is the relaxation phase the res it results in virtually cessation of ventricular filling which we called as diastasis it is very important to note here that 75% of blood passes to the ventricles from the atria during the rapid filling and the reduced filling phases of the ventricular diastole which we have already seen in the atrial systole phase in the atrial systole phase 25% of the blood only passes through the ventricles because the reduced filling phase of the ventricular diastole and the rapid filling phase of the ventricular diastole contributes to 75% of the blood passing to the ventricles now this is the end of the all total phases of the cardiac cycle that is the last rapid filling phase here what happens it coincides with the atrial systole this atrial systole brings about the last rapid filling phase it pushes the additional 25% of blood in the ventricles that means when the atrial systole is going on the last rapid filling phase of the ventricular diastole also occurs with this phase the ventricular cycle is completed now the cycle again repeat that is the atrial systole is caused and further the next different phases goes on thus completing the whole cardiac cycle now this is a very beautiful tabular form that i have included in this presentation which shows the different phases of the cardiac cycle the condition of the av valves whether is it open or closed the condition of the semi lunar valves and also the status of the ventricles and atria the atrial systole the av valves are open and the semi lunar valves are closed the atrials contract here and pump the blood ventricles are partially filled and receive the last 30% of the blood for a final resting volume of approximately 130 ml in the isovolumetric contraction both the av valves and the semi lunar valves are closed as because here the ventricles begin to contract and the ventricular muscle initially shortens only a little but the intraventricular pressure rises sharply as i have already told it act as a closed chamber here the ventricular volume in this phase remains unchanged the next phase that is the ventricular ejection in this phase the av valves remains closed and the semi lunar valves remains open here the pressure in the left and right ventricle exceeds the pressure in the aorta and ejection is rapid at first then slowing down as the systole progresses amount ejected each ventricle per stroke it at rest is 70 to 90 ml which is 
known as the stroke volume. Approximately 50 ml of blood remains in each ventricle at the end of the systole. Now moving on to the second phase of the ventricular diastole that is the isovolumetric relaxation phase. Here we can see the beautiful diagram where there is the flow of blood into the ventricles. Here what happens the phase starts with the closure of the semilunar valves and since the semilunar valves have closed and also the atrioventricular valves have not yet opened so the ventricles continue to relax as a closed chamber in this phase. This causes the rapid fall of pressure inside the ventricles. The aortic and the pulmonary artery pressures rises slightly here. This valve closure is associated with a small black flow of blood into the ventricles. This is a very beautiful tabular diagram of the different heart sounds that are heard during the cardiac cycle. The first heart sound is a long soft low pitched sound which sounds like the word lub and its duration is 0 0.1 to 0 0.17 seconds. It is due to the closure of the atrioventricular valves and it is normally hard by the stethoscope. The second heart sound is a short, sharp, high pitched like the word dub and its duration is 0 0.10 seconds to 0 0.14 seconds. This is due to the closure of the semilunar valves and it is also hard by the stethoscope. The third heart sound as I have already said is heard only in children and it is low pitched. Its duration is about 0 0.07 seconds to 0 0.10 seconds. This is caused due to the vibrations set up in the cardiac wall in rapid failing phase. It cannot be heard by the stethoscope. The fourth and the last heart sound is inaudible and its duration is about 0 0.02 to 0 0.04 seconds. This is due to the vibrations set up during the atrial systole and it becomes audible only during the diseases. Here is a very beautiful diagram in which we can see the change of pressure within the aorta, the left atrium and the left ventricle during the cardiac cycle. We can see here three colors, three lines which depicts the left atrium in blue color, the left ventricle in red color and the aorta in black color. In the key given in the right side of the diagram we can see that when the pressure changes in which phase. That means in if we talk about the case of left atrium during the atrial contraction the atrial ejection of blood into the ventricles and the atrial systole ending we can see that the left atrium has a pressure of above zero when in the seventh after the seventh point when the isovolumetric relaxation occurs, the left atrioventricular valve opens. If we observe the red line, we can see that it depicts the left ventricle. During the atrial systole ending, the AV valves close and there is a sharp rise of pressure until and unless the ventricular ejection occurs, which we can see in the fifth point the pressure starts to drop when the semilunar valves closes and it continues dropping until the passive ventricular filling occurs. If we talk about the aorta which is in the black line we can see that 
the aortic valves open when it is about 80 mm Hg in the aorta and the aortic valve closes when it is about 100 to 110 mm Hg in the aorta and we can observe a particular dichrotic notch which is seen depicting in the black line. This is due to the closure of the semilunar valves and the production of the second heart sound. If we move on down we can see the various heart sounds where the first heart sound that is the lub is observed when the AV valves are closed. The second heart sound which is observed when the isovolumetric relaxation occurs and the third and the fourth heart sound is generally not audible in the case of adults. This figure depicts how the pressure changes during the cardiac cycle that comprises of the whole relaxation phase and the contraction phases of both the atrium and the ventricles. Now moving on to the slide in which we can see the changes in volume during the cardiac cycle. During the atrial systole as we can see in the diagram the atrial systole that coincides with the rest left rapid filling phase of the ventricular diastole here about 105 ml that is the 75 percent of blood that has already flown into the ventricles the remaining 25 percent is now moving on into the ventricles that means it causes the of the atrioventricular valves and we can see one point that is the end diastolic volume. It is that volume which at the end of the ventricular diastole the ventricular volume is about 130 ml. Here we can see in the diagram that it has reached the level of 130 which is the end diastolic volume. The end systolic volume is the volume where about 50 ml of blood in each ventricle at the end of the ventricular systole is the end systolic volume as we can see it is touching the level of 50 in the isovolumetric contraction phase or in the protodiastole phase there is no change in volume but in the ventricular ejection phase there is a change in volume during the last phases that is the rapid filling phase and the low slow filling phases the volume changes first rapidly and then slowly and as we can see in the graph about 105 ml of blood or passes to the ventricle during this phase Now moving on, this is a beautiful graph which shows the pressure volume curve or the pressure volume loop. It refers to the graph which is obtained in the form of a loop by plotting pressure along the ordinate and the volume along the abscissa at various stages of the cardiac cycle. This is an alternate method of representing the cardiac cycle. In the figure, a normal ventricular pressure volume loop is shown. If we analyze the AB segment, it represents the rapid passive filling phase, the reduced filling phase and the last rapid filling phase of the ventricular diastole, which reveals that the at the end of diastole, that is at point B, it is about 130 ml of volume and point B marks the closure of the AV valves. The ventricular pressure rises from 2 to 2 millimeter mercury at point A to about 6 to 7 millimeter Hg 
at point B which marks the end of the atrial systole. If we talk about the point or the segment BC, it represents the isovolumetric contraction phase of the ventricular system and it reveals that the volume remains same that is about 130 mm but the pressure rises from 6 to 7 mm Hg to about 80 mm Hg. If we talk about the segment CE, it represents the ventricular ejection phase of the ventricular system. The point C marks the opening of the semilunar valves or the aortic valves. The segment CD represents the rapid ejection phase. Therefore, there is a rapid peak in the graph. And the segment DE represents the slow ejection phase. The segment CE all total represents that during the rapid ejection phase the ventricular pressure increases rapidly up to a maximum of 120 mmHg and then falls during the slow ejection phase which is the segment DE to about 80 mm of Hg. During the ventricular ejection phase in the segment CE the ventricular volume decreases from about 130 ml to about 50 ml which is called the end systolic volume. And if we talk about the last segment which is the EA of the pressure volume loop, it represents the phase of isovolumetric relaxation and the point E marks the closure of the semilunar valves. It, this segment reveals that the ventricular pressure falls rapidly from about 80 mm Hg to about 2 to 3 mm of Hg and here the ventricular volume remains unchanged. In the graph the middle portion of the loop is known as the stroke volume that is 120 minus 40 which is about one what which is about 80. There is a disadvantage of the pressure volume loop that the time dimension is eliminated and therefore it is not possible to tell from this loop how fast the events are occurring. But there is also an advantage that the work done by the heart is instantly apparent from the area enclosed by the loop. There is also a clinical significance that the pressure volume loop can be utilized in change hemodynamic state like exercise, heart failure, etc. to understand the pressure volume events during the cardiac cycle. Now talking about the factors which are affecting the cardiac cycle, here is a beautiful graph which shows us the different factors which are involved in affecting the cardiac cycle. We can see the factors are divided into two main classes. One is the valvular diseases and other is the variations. The valvular diseases, again, it is divided into two, that is stenosis and competence. And the variations are also divided into two parts, the physiological variations and the pathological variations. Now if we talk about the factors which includes the valvular diseases, the first one is the stenosis. Stenosis generally means when the heart valves narrows as a result of which the blood flowing in the heart is rapid with turbulence due to the narrow orifice of the valve and it results in murmur. The murmur sounds can be heard using a stethoscope and also during an ECG. The second is the incompetence that means when there is weakening of the heart valve. When the valve become weak it cannot close properly. As a result there is backflow of valve blood which results in turbulence and this disease is also called regurgitation or valvular insufficiency. 
Now if we look at the physiological variations, it includes many factors like age, sex, body build, diurnal variation, environmental temperature, emotional conditions, after meals, exercise, high altitude, posture, pregnancy, sleep. All these factors combines or it constitutes to affect the cardiac cycle. If we talk about the pathological variations, we can see when there is an occurrence of fever due to oxidative processes, there is an increase in heart rate. During anemia, it is due to hypoxia. The atrial fibrillation, it is because of the incomplete filling of the ventricles. During congestive cardiac failure, it is due to the weak contractions of the heart. And fifth point is the shock. It means when a person receives shock, there is poor pumping and circulation of blood. Another factor is hemorrhage. This is due to decreased blood volume. So these are the two different variations which affects the cardiac cycle. Thank you viewers for watching this. That's all for this particular section. The remaining part will be discussed in the next video so please do watch it.